Hello racers and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Phantom Fax Machine 3S. We did a previous video on the Phantom Fax Machine 3 and that was to test the rotors in your brushless motors. The 3S tests the stator in your brushless motors. It's a precision brushless resistance inductance meter. So it tests the resistance in the in the stator and it tests the inductance of the stator. Now I bought mine from Phantom directly. You can see that the MSRP on it is quite expensive. They do sell these in some uh, other online shops such as A Main Hobbies. I'll put a link to that in uh, the description in case you want to take a look at that. Um, one thing to note on the box, it says this is a precision calibrated Instatec 802 milliohm meter. So it's been calibrated versus a very expensive meter. Uh, so you get two meters in this, you get the resistance meter and an inductance meter. And if you want to get anything more precise than this, then you're into some high-end equipment. Let's take a look inside the box, see what you get. Now in the box, you get a little sheet that tells you to go online to get your instruction manual. I followed that little link. It did not end up going to the instruction manual. I did find the manual and downloaded it, and I'll put a link to that in, in the description as well. Now what you do get in the box is a power supply, six volt power supply, which will We'll give this little uh, unit a test here in a minute. And you do get the meter. So let's put this aside. Uh, over there. Now, let's have a up close to the meter you, with what you get. Now you can see it's a small size. Printed case, embossed Phantom logo in it. Very simple as compared to the stator. So this is a very small unit. Uh, you'll notice that there are two sets of connectors out of it. It's kind of an octopus of wires, but you can see here are the cables used for resistance checking. And then these other two uh, wires with the gold clips are for inductance testing. Um, just give me a moment here and I'll set this up and what we'll do is a couple little tests. We'll we'll test it just testing a stator, just checking its resistance and inductance to test how uh, how well they how well it works and see the procedure that this little guy has. And then we'll compare two different rotors or stators and see which one may may be better than the other. And then we'll do a test with uh, testing a motor with a rotor in it versus no rotor in it. So here, let me get set up. i got to plug it in and put it on a little stand so we can check it out. And we're back. I got the set up a little stand here so you can see the little thing a little better. As you can see, there's a lot of wires in this when you do testing these um, stators. So wire management is crucial. What I did is I just put my put the put the little meter up on a cell phone stand just so bring it a little closer to the camera. I just wanted to wanted to show you the different features of this. We're going to test this little stator here and show you how I test them and the procedure of how this little guy works. Now there's not very many things on the actual meter itself. We got a power button tells you the power supply. Uh, you can see it tests milliohm for resistance and millihenries for inductance. There's a little button here to choose how many poles uh, you're testing at a time. And what they mean by that is if you're to a, to a test resistance across the two, two poles, you can see I'll just switch it to two. That shows 22.6. And if you pick one pole, 
it's 45.1. So it takes the resistance reading and divides it by half. I encourage you to test your stators out of the motor. And we'll do a little test at the end to show why that is why that is true. Okay. So the procedure to test the your stator. Uh, I test by putting one end on the collection ring where all the different coils are wired into this to this ring and I test it from one of the soldering mounts so I test one pole testing through there gives you test one coil at a time and that's how this meter is really made to be used um, so what you'll notice here first test is the inductance so you just click the in just organize these wires a little bit. So I clip the, the negative to the to the coil. Put this where we can see a little better. And you can see that it is 0.33 millihenries of inductance. You'll notice that the that the value stays on the little meter. Now what a what a millihenry is or what a henry is is how much power is stored or it takes to create a magnet from a coil. So this is a, a measure of how much power is used to create a, a magnet in a coil, which is different than resistance, which we'll check next. So again, clipping on to the collection ring, clipping on to one of the solder points, and you can see it the resistance of this is 22.8 milliohms. And then to test the next coil in it, you push the slot button. They call them slots. Okay, so that was the first one. Now again to the collection ring, to the next um, solder tab, you can see 0.33 milliohms. Or uh, millihenry. Okay. Disconnect those. Connect to the collection ring. Connect to the second solder tab. Make sure that I get it right. And we see it's 23.1. So the resistance of this particular coil is a little bit higher. Push the button to move to the next slot. Oops. If you hold it too long, it resets. I'm going to have to redo that test. Collection ring. Center. It'll record it. I'll have to reset that again. Here we go. 0.34 it says. So this coil here is a little bit more inductance and we'll do it we'll do a test to show what you're looking for at the end for tuning with this 22.9 quick press next slot test the connect to the ring connect to the solder tab 0.33 disconnect connect to the ring Connect to the solder tab, 22.9. So you can see that two coils are pretty much identical and one of them is light, slightly less resistance. Now if you push the slot button again, it'll go to the first slot and it'll erase the values there. So when you disconnect, it actually goes to zero. So for that last coil, you just have to document it, write it down. Okay, so that's a procedure. You can see there's a lot of, of uh, disconnecting, reconnecting. What I'm going to do is just reset it. And we'll test. We'll just do a quick test between two stators. So we have two stators. Okay, so this is take three. So now we're going to do a test of comparing these two stators. Both 17.5. And we would want to figure out which one is the best of the two. And when testing, the best is the stator 
with the least resistance and the highest inductance. So that means that the coil has a lot of power in the coil to generate the magnet, but least resistance means that the power is going to the coil and not being lost to resistance. So this one here, 33 microhenries of inductance. Now let's test the resistance. 23.0 of resistance. And now we'll just move to the next slot. Now I'm just doing a, a quick test this way. Put the two slots side by side, put the two stators side by side. We're just gonna test the first coil. So once again, connect to the collector ring, connect to the first uh, solder tab. You can see this one has 0.35 microhenries of inductance. And let's just double check its resistance. 0.27, let me just move to the next slot to hold that there. Okay. So in comparing these two, put them side by side here, we found that this one has 0.33 of inductance and 23 milliohm of resistance. This has 0 0.035 of inductance and 22.7 of resistance. So when comparing this, this has the least amount of resistance, but has the most inductance, which is the most power going to the coil which means this would be a stronger stator for your motor. So what you'd notice on track with this is that you'd have a motor that just seemed to pull a little bit harder on the straights and it would be a little bit quicker at the corners and things. So this is the type of thing that you can do with, with this um, meter. Now as a grand finale, I just wanted to show you the, to show you the difference between testing with a rotor in your motor and without the rotor in your motor. So what I have is I have two 13.5 uh, Reedy fixed timing motors. One I was doing a little test on, on a rotor in a different video. Uh, this one is, uh, I, it's completely assembled with the rotor in it. See the rotor in the end. Okay, so what I will do is we will just test across the solder joints. So we'll test, first we'll test the, the stator with no rotor in it. And you can see it's 0 0.054 millihenries. I'll just move to the next slot. And I'll reset that slot. Okay, so 0.54 on that guy. Now let's test this one with the rotor in it. And what you'll notice is that with the magnet inside, that the magnet is influencing the test. So it's actually, this is reporting it as half. And that's why you would want to take these apart to test because it, the, the, the inductance test is to see how much power it takes to generate a magnet. And with the magnet already inside, it's influencing that. It's either fighting the, the creation of the magnetic field or it's adding to the creation of the magnetic field. So you can see that that test is actually uh, influences it. So if you were comparing two motors, one was apart, one wasn't, you might think, oh, this is the better stator when actually the one in your motor could be. So there we go. So we've seen operation of the fax machine 3S. Did a little test between a couple of, of stators. Showed you that you have to take your stator apart for to get accurate measurements. And talked about how to choose between two stators, which one would be better. Least resistance, most inductance. So if you like this type of, if you like the video, click like. If you'd like to see more of this type of video, click subscribe. And if you have any other ideas for uh, videos in the future. Just put those in the comments below. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.